Welcome to IXDF Kerala Design Meetup. Our session today is getting started with Tailwind CSS by Prinju Koshi Vaidin. Um, this is another episode of Design Meetup 2.0 powered by IXDF Kerala and co-sponsored by Experion Technologies. We'll be covering Tailwind CSS, which is a utility for CSS framework used to rapidly build websites without writing any CSS. And we'll be discussing and comparing with current frameworks and how it helps us to build web pages much faster. To coming to our speaker today, he's joining us from the capital city known for its old world charm from Trivandrum in Kerala. Prinju is a tech enthusiast. He loves watching tech reviews and occasionally tries his hand at making random videos on gadgets he uses. He's a social being. He loves interacting with people. Prinju is a front-end developer and he's quite active on Stack Overflow and community forums, always trying to solve problems posted by others. A recorded version of this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. I'd like to invite Prinju. Over to you, Prinju. Uh, thank you, Vandana, for the great introduction. And today we'll be covering Tailwind CSS, uh, which is a, a CSS framework, which is used to rapidly build web pages. And I've been experimenting on it for quite some time. And I thought I, I would share my thoughts about it. So before we jump into Tailwind CSS, so let's just uh, have a brief introduction about uh, the foundations of a web application. Then we will be trying different methods of styling uh, web pages. Then we will be comparing why uh, Tailwind, uh, sorry, why component CSS frameworks were introduced in the market, and we'll be comparing it with ta uh, Tailwind CSS. I will show you how to install and get you started, and we'll be having a live demo. After that, we'll be having a Q&A session just to clear up all your doubts. So, what are the three foundations of a web page? If you ask me. Uh, there are three main components, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So HTML is known as the content layer, where, which where we create all our contents like uh, input boxes, text area, all those things. It is the fundamental building block of any web page. Next is the presentation layer. That is, we use CSS to uh, style our website. It primarily handles all the look and feel of a web page. Uh, it targets various screen sizes to make uh, web pages responsive on any device. So the last layer is the behavior layer. It is uh, done using JavaScript. Uh, it increases the interactivity of a web page. It provides complex functions. And uh, for example, uh, if you want to click a button and a pop-up should appear, you, we can do it, uh, do it using JavaScript. So let's see the basic uh, structure of HTML. So we have an HTML tag. Inside that, we have head tag and a body tag. Then we have these meta tags. These are used for the browsers to understand what this type of page is about. And these meta tags are also used for search engine optimization. Then we have a link tag. It is used to refer external links like style sheets to our project, to our HTML. Then we have the body tag. Inside this, we write all our content of the uh, content that should appear on our web page. So, uh, inside the script tag, we will be writing all the JavaScript required uh, in order to do the interactive part. Next is CSS. We have three ways of writing CSS. That is inline CSS. Uh, it's very simple. We can just add the style to that element, and inside the style attribute, we write our specific style. Next is uh, internal CSS, which means we are selecting the particular element of the HTML and we are just referring it uh, to a, a, style, a style tag wrap and we just apply the style. Next one is external CSS. That is, we are linking an external CSS to our HTML using the link tag. Uh, it can be uh, done like the uh, same way we do internal CSS also, like uh, selecting the particular element. So let's just, I will just show you how to do this. So here I have a, hope you can see this. Um, here I have a index.html file. I will just create a boilerplate 
and I, I will just refer the external link right here. Then I will just, I'm going to customize a button for this demo. So I'm just adding a button and giving it getting started. So if you can see that, I'm just, if you see this uh, web page, this, these are uh, the default styles that, uh, that HTML provides. Not to style this, I have to give a class. So I'm giving it a class name called button custom. So inside the CSS file, I'm giving a class declaration. Then I will be giving a background color uh, for of a blue violet. Then this, I will just adjust that. Then I'll be, I'll just show you side by side. So, so I, I'm giving a ba uh, background color. I'm uh, removing the border radius, border given there. Then I will be giving a padding of 10 pixel. Then I want to change the color, the text color to white. I will be adding a border radius of uh, 10 pixel. So it's almost starting to look like a button. Now I want to add a horror effect. That is when the mouse is on the button, uh, I want to show a separate style. So I have to write button, dot, button hyphen custom and a horror effect. I'm just changing the color for it to a much more darker color. So you can see that all the hover effect is also added here. So when it comes to large project, project uh, it becomes very difficult to control all these and customize all the elements required uh, for our web page. Uh, it, it was very time consuming to uh, begin with. So as the demand rises, raised in the market, uh, we had to use uh, alternatives such as Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is a component driven framework. Uh, example for goods, uh, example for uh, component driven frameworks are Bootstrap, Foundation, Material, and Bulma. So they provide us with a, a predefined uh, CSS components uh, like a button. They give us a, a predefined component like button, cards, a checkbox, all those things. Uh, they have styled all this and uh, given uh, to us for uh, ready to use. So Bootstrap and other frameworks has changed the uh, changed the way we write front end code. Uh, it has given great UI components along with the structure for scalable and maintainable style sheets. It is great working with large teams. Uh, the problem is it comes with a lot of code. It is perfect if you don't want to build anything from scratch. I'm about customizing it. However, it is not as effective. So let's see a basic example with Legos. So we can uh, get uh, pre-built Legos from market. And if you want, they will provide uh, cars, uh, trucks, be, uh, bikes, all those things. So what we had to do is we had to just arrange all these according to our need so we can achieve what we need. So I'll just show you an example of the use. Um, we'll just go to the Bootstrap website. So this is the Bootstrap website here. If you go to the docs, we can see that inside the components, if you want a card design, you have to just copy these classes and add it to a project. If you need a button, these are pre-built uh, components given by Bootstrap. So I'll just show you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to add our CDN link. That is, we are calling the external style sheet. So I will just copy it. I will just add it right here instead of our. So I'm just commenting it out. So a link tag. And uh, I will just add like this. I will, I have given the bootstrap link. Now I want to create a button. So I'm going to the component style and taking the card for example, and I'm just adding it right here. Then I'm getting the button that we require. 
and just copying it and adding right here. Okay, so let's see the website. So we have um, built uh, a component like button, card, all those things without even writing any CSS. This was the this was this created a boom in uh, you know, component driven frameworks because it was very easy to use and you can build off uh, large websites from scratch itself. But the problem arises when we have to customize this. When we are trying to customize it, it requires uh, overriding of CSS. That means we have to override the current style with our custom design. So I will just write a custom button. I will just use the previous styles that I used. I will just add those classes right here. So, I, I forgot to add this. So just after adding those classes, we can see that it appears to have our required design. But the problem, if you see this, uh, you can see that all our styles are right here. But if you go down, we can see that all these strike throughs, uh, which means that these lines are being used as well as these lines are being ignored. So what it means that we are giving extra lines of code to our style sheet, which uh, in, in the end, which uh, it becomes a big style sheet. So that's where Tailwind CSS uh, started to have my attention. So it is a utility first framework. It is used to rapidly build modern website without ever even leaving your HTML. Uh, Tailwind CSS is highly customizable. It uses a low level of CSS framework. Tailwind allows you to build custom build uh, designs, eliminating the opinionated st component styles that you want to uh, override anyway. So it builds beautiful custom user interfaces with, which can be effectively built using CSS without putting much code in your file. So just take a small concept. They will provide us with combinations of classes which for example, if you look at this, uh, I want uh, text color, this is a text color class. Next is a white uh, color, something like that. So we have to just take the necessary classes and use it to build our design. So uh, we, we saw that uh, for Bootstrap, we, we, if you want to uh, change the appearance, you have to override. That means we have to put uh, these Legos on top of it. So uh, it becomes larger in size, and but only it changes the appearance. For Tailwind CSS, if you want to change this orange uh, or yellow uh, windmill, you have to just remove this and add the specific classes. And you can remove these unnecessary classes that which we are not going to use. So this is how effective Tailwind is. So let's see an example of building a button. So we have a button right here. Uh, in button B, I wanted a rounded uh, corners. That is, uh, that means that I want a border radius. So I'm giving rounded. And this is a scale that uh, Tailwind uses like by default called XS, SM, LG, 2XL, 3XL, all those levels. Then we, I just, I need a shadow of uh, large. Then I'm giving a indigo shade for the background. I'm giving a white color for the text. Then I'm giving a padding for uh, about four. So the result will be this. This button is just generated by using these classes, combination of these classes. So uh, next we will look into different uh, style classes. Like this is a font size class where the syntax is uh, text hyphen the level name. That is uh, text hyphen excess text hyphen SM, base, LG, XL, 2XL, and 3XL, and so on. We can customize it uh, using the other Tailwind files. Then for next example, is a shadow level. We have uh, base, EMD, LG, XL, 2XL, and inner. So let's see uh, Tailwind in action. So I'll just go to tailwind.com tailwindcs.com. So their bold claim is rapidly build modern website without even leaving a HTML. So this person is writing 
rounded full that means they are using a broad radius then he is make changing the font weight to semi bold they are giving a uh, text color all those things are uh, applied using this classes so all like uh, text center there is no there will be no conflict between the class names because it is only related to the styles that we use we are using flex that means we are using display flex uh, it is using uh, uh, this is called the media queries this is how we use media queries in uh, tailwind so coming down uh, an api design for your api for your design system that means it has a constant level of uh, sizes for the entire website like colors they they are given uh, palette colors then they are given predefined shadows all those things so every design will be different from one another because all the styles are uh, all the classes are all the styles are created from combinations of classes so it is very tiny in production it removes all unwanted css on production so if you are not using the flex one it will remove flex one from the production build i will show you that then we can create responsive designs just by using this. so if you see this uh, sm that means it has a certain breakpoint uh, around 600 pixel so if if i am resizing this window to that breakpoint it triggers all the sm related styles so this is how uh, responsive of a tailwind uh, utility works. So if I'm expanding to MD breakpoint, it takes all the MD classes and applies to it. It has hover effects. We can do hover effects just by adding a hover class, then uh, followed by the specific uh, color like this. Then we have dark mode also. It uh, gives dark mode styles like if a class has been added to the parent class, we can use dark mode like dark mode uh, if i switch it all the uh, styles from the dark will be applied so i will just show you how to uh, check uh, how to play around with it so this is a tailwind website uh, i will just show you i i think about creating a, a two line uh, text so i will just create two divs uh, I am giving a heading like so I am giving a uh, design meetup 2.0 so I am creating this HTML and along with it I am writing the CSS for it so it reduces the um, separate time taken to uh, style the uh, components so I am just giving a font um, bold, I'm giving it a font size of uh, LG. All those, um, I can just uh, style along with the uh, creation of HTML. So next I want is, a, I want two buttons to be side by side. So I am adding two divs, uh, then I will be adding a button. So I'll be adding a, a register button right here. So you can see that there is no styles. Uh, if you saw that bootstrap uh, method, you saw that uh, they give, give us a predefined style in which Tailwind is a utility class. Uh, it contains utility classes where we don't have a predefined style. So in order to style this, I am going to have a deco shade of 600 and giving a padding of four and then giving a, a rounded corners. I'm going to change the text color to white. So next is I want hover effects on it. So now it, it is just a button, no actions on it. So I'm giving a hover effect using the hover and I'm changing the color to a much more darker color. So if you can see that this button uh, is having a darker color. So if I want to add a transition, like I want to give a small animation to it, I'm giving duration. So you can see that all the 
admissions happening. If you want to add a, if you want to use transform functions, I have to write transform and give it hover. And I am scaling it to, for example, that. So you can see that all these are done using just classes, the combinations of classes. If you want, if you wanted to do this in a normal vanilla CSS or using a bootstrap, you have to do overridings, you have to create another class and all, all those things. We can just minimize our um, wastage of time. So coming back to our PowerPoint. So I will show you how to get you install, get it installed on the system and you can use a CDN link as well. Uh, and but if you are using it in your local project, you need node environment and uh, a basic uh, node installation knowledge. So I will just take that. So I will just create. I will just go to this folder, Tailwind. So I am going to install, I am going to initialize a, a project into our uh, folder that is mpn init hyphen y. That means it accepts all default styles, a default uh, package for a project. So you can see that the package.json is uh, created. And then I want to install uh, Tailwind, which is from uh, npn tailwind dots tailwind css so i am installing that now the package will be downloaded from the tailwind website to our uh, project now all the necessary files have been downloaded then i want to initialize the uh, customizing part of tailwind that is i am going to install npx tailwind css in it it creates a uh, config file just for uh, customizing the entire project we can we can have full control using the tailwind uh, config file so you can see that we can use purge we can use dark mode we can extend our theme right here we can use all sort of plugins for vendor prefixing all those things i will just add a vendor prefixing uh, package too so it will be installed and will be added in our package JSON. So I want to create two folders. One is public folder. So I'll just create a new folder called public. And then create a source folder. So inside the public folder, I am creating an index.html and along with a style sheet that is styles.css. So inside the source file, where I'm going to call all the necessary Tailwind styles. So I am giving tail uh, styles.css. So I will just create a boilerplate for it and link our this style sheet. So everything is working. Now I want to import Tailwind styles to our main style sheet. So, so for that, I'm going to tailwind.com. So go, let's go to the documentation and let's find, uh, you can see that all the core concepts are right here. We can customize, we can, we can have container. We have to just check for the breakpoints or if you want to customize it, you can do that using our customization in tailwind.config file, all those things. I will just show you that later. Now I'm going to install it on our uh, laptop. So going to the installation. I will just import all the necessary CSS from uh, the Tailwind package and just copying this and pasting it right here. Now, what I want is I want to convert all these CSS into our style sheet through a build command. So I'm going back to package.json. It might be a bit, uh, uh, what do you mean, a bit uh, complex for you, but just I am just showing you this. So I'm writing a build command. Inside that I am um, building a tailwind CSS build command. I'm just targeting the source folder first. 
so styles.css then i'm giving the output file to this page so i am giving public slash styles.css so by this i will be converting all the i will be copying all the styles available here to our style sheet so let's just test that npn run uh, build command So it is now building. It is taking all the styles from the Tailwind package to our style sheet. So if you can see that there is nothing right now. After the build is successful, we have almost 3.75 MB of Tailwind styles. It's almost two, uh, 20, uh, two lakhs of uh, lines of classes right here. So I will just show you how it works now. And I'm going to take that uh, Tailwind style I, I wrote. So I will just copy this and add it right here. So when I run this, we can see that all the styles are added right here. This is how simple it is to install Tailwind to your system and get you started. So if you go back to our index.html, you can see that I have used only few classes like a relative, uh, absolute position, all those things. I'm, I'm just using few classes. But if you think that, uh, are these lines of code uh, considered as unused lines? So I would say we have an option for that. If you go to the Tailwind config file, we have a perch CSS option where we can uh, remove unwanted CSS and give a smaller file at the end of the production. So I will just add a, um, uh, style to it. Uh, I will add a class to it. Like I am going to scan the entire project uh, HTMLs and I'll just save that. Then I am going to add a uh, production command. I'm giving a production and node underscore nv equal to production. So what it does is it, when it runs, uh, the Tailwind goes and searches all the HTMLs. If you are using uh, React, you can also tag that, or uh, you can you know, tag other JavaScript options also. So by that, you will scan all the index, all the HTML files in your project, and it takes all those classes and filters only the un uh, unnecessary classes from it. So I will just show you that. So I'm making sure that, okay, yeah. I will just run production. So if you can see that it is running that and it is filtering all the unnecessary classes from our style sheet. And gives in, in the end, it gives you only 14 KB of style. That means those styles are only used, the styles that we only use. That means only the basic that we use right here. So if you, search this you can find that like that this is the most important feature in tailwind that i saw so let's come back to our presentation so let's talk about the features of tailwind it has perch css which you saw uh, uh, that i have reduced the entire package size to almost 12 uh, almost 14 kb we can do responsive screens we can highly customize everything uh, we can actually organize the structure of uh, our lengthy classes to uh, a, a smaller class. Then it is very tiny in production. It supports dark theme. Uh, it has great community support uh, using the Discord. They have appointed people to uh, come uh, for help. And next, uh, after using Tailwind for some time, I have noticed few limitations that I face. So I'll just share that. So the initial step, setup and customizing Tailwind might take some time because uh, for larger projects, if you want full control over your uh, entire project, uh, you, you have to customize it using the Tailwind config file. Then CSS uh, selector combinations are not possible. The grouping of zero classes are not possible and complex animations are very difficult to implement and the grouping of pseudo classes is me. I'm, what I meant is, if you go back, uh, this is a project that I've done. 
uh, during my free time. Uh, so I'll just show you that. If you see that these hover effects cannot be grouped into one, uh, just check for the right one. Yeah, these hover effects, we are repeatedly writing these hover effects like this because uh, I feel that it is just uh, uh, making it more lengthier. So there is no, now there is no such way to uh, organize this. So that's that. And for, uh, for about the customizing, I will just show you that. You can customize different breakpoints. You can add different classes to reach your breakpoint. If you want to change the primary text color of your web page, you can add fonts, you can have custom heights, all those things. You can have background colors, all those things. If you want to remove the current existing breakpoints, you have to just, for existing style, if you want to, uh, we can just add it right here. It, it removes all the necessary uh, default classes from our package. So let's, it is not uh, for every team, since it does not follow the BEM conventions. That is, we cannot uh, read properly for, it is very difficult for developers to uh, read it at, because it is very lengthy on, on the HTML, it doesn't look good on uh, the DOM. So that's one disadvantage I saw, and, but there is solution for that. I'll show you that. So what's next? Uh, I suggest you guys to have basic knowledge in CSS before going into Tailwind. Tailwind is a very powerful and customizing toolkit. It is very flexible and maintainable, even though it ha still has uh, some limitations, but bear those in mind before you try to use it. So I think that's it, guys. I'm, I'm not going too much into it because it will become repetitive because all the same concepts are used in every styling element. So my goal was to introduce you to Tailwind and show you how to get you started right away. And if you ask me Bootstrap or Tailwind, I would say it depends upon the project you want to build. Uh, if you want to build a project without much customization and overriding, you can definitely use Bootstrap. But if you have a project that requires high customization and full, uh, you want full control over your elements, Tailwind is the go. Hope you, I hope this session gave you an insight into Tailwind and its possibilities. Uh, once more, I thank IDX Kerala uh, for giving me a chance to express my thoughts on this topic and to all those who spend their time in this session with us. Thank you.